video we want to look at enterobius vermicularis. So first of all, just as an uh, introduction, okay, before we go to enterobius vermicularis, you know, if there is an itchy anus at night, if the person's anus itches only at night, okay, it can be mean that it is an enterobius vermicularis infection. Guys, uh, are you understanding? If there is an itchy anus at night, okay, it can mean that the worms are coming out of the anus, okay, so that could be enterobius vermicularis, okay. So that is what is uh, today's topic, enterobius vermicularis. It's very, very interesting, isn't it? Let's move on. Enterobius vermicularis. So here's the slide, enterobius vermicularis. Basically, what you should understand, uh, you know enterobius vermicularis is a worm, right? That much you know. It is called as a pinworm. It can be called as a threadworm. Pinworm and threadworm are kind of good names for it because it is having a very thin uh, tail which is like pointed pin or it can look like a white thread, okay? So that's what you saw here, right? You saw that it looks like threads. Didn't you see this? Here, can you see? They look like threads. Yes. So those are the worms, okay? So that's why they're called as pinworms or threadworms. So it is an it is a it's coming under helminths under nematodes, correct? It comes under helminths under nematodes. You have intest, uh, under nematodes, you have intestinal nematodes. In that large intestine, you will find this enterobius vermicularis. So it's in an intestinal nematode. This is a very common parasite, especially in children. So their habitat is large intestine, especially the cecum and the appendix and ascending colon. But they, however, they uh, uh, go all over the place and come out of the anus, right? That's what you saw just now, okay? So their habitat is the large intestine. Actually, this uh, Entropius vermicularis, another thing that is a speciality about it is it is found a lot in cold and temperate countries. So in America, let's say. This is more like American, okay? Entropius vermicularis. So just, just a way of telling you to remember. Otherwise, it is worldwide in distribution. Strangely, not the tropics, but it is affecting the temperate regions, okay? So, that was a small introduction to Entrobius vermicularis. Are you feeling good? Shall we continue? Moving on. <clears throat> the morphology of Entrobius uh, vermicularis is very, very similar to all the other morphologies. The female is going to be very long and the male is going to be short, okay? Here's something which is special. Uh, look at this. <clears throat> they have some double, double, what was that? Double bulb, double bulb esophagus. Okay, you can see that here. Double bulb esophagus means this part, guys. Can you see this? This one part and this two part. So this is double bulb esophagus. Here also you can really can see a double bulb esophagus structure is there uh, in these worms, Entrobius vermicularis. Okay. Now the mouth. The mouth is surrounded by a three wing like three wing-like cervical alley. This is, these are cuticular expansions. You can see them here. So basically they have three wing-like cervical alley, cuticular expansions. Very, very typical of this entrobius vermicularis, right? So you have this kind of a cap, what you see. Those are cervical alley or cuticular expansions. The male is shorter. Okay, so the male is shorter. Always the male is shorter, right? We have whatever we have seen so far. Worm is oviparous. That means it lays eggs. Okay, so what and all you saw here, they are having pointed heads like threads. They look like white threads, right? You saw that. They have a cervical alley around the mouth. So that is called, uh, the, those are cuticular expansions. Esophagus is double bulb structure. Okay, so that was the morphology of the adult worms. Now let us look at the morphology of enterobius vermicularis, the eggs. The eggs, the photo is here. They are colorless. They are not bile stained. Of course, you can see they are colorless. They are not bile stained. Look at this. They are actually plano convex. Plano convex means one side they are plain, the other side they are convex. So that is how these are. They are plano convex. They are ovoid in shape. They are. Uh, they float. Okay. They float. They float. They are uh, ovoid, elongated, ovoid. They are flattened on one side and the convex on the other. And that's why they are called as plano convex. The eggshell is double layered. This also you can see here. The eggshell is double layered. Are you able to see here? There is double layered eggshell and the eggshell is ac the, uh, it's actually transparent. But still, though it is transparent, it's actually very thick. Okay. So these eggs are very thick and though they are transparent, they are thick, they are double layered. Okay. Now the outer albuminous layer, this uh, these eggs actually stick to each other, guys. These eggs actually stick to each other. Please pay attention here. The eggs actually they have albuminous layer, outer albuminous layer, which makes them stick to each other, and they stick to our clothing, etc. Okay. 
Now the egg itself contains, what does the egg contain? It contains a tadpole shaped coiled embryo. It contains a tadpole shaped coiled embryo. So if this is the egg, which is double layer, double shell, the egg shell is double layer, that will be a tadpole shaped, what is this? Embryo. A tadpole shaped coiled embryo will be there inside this egg. Okay. This one, it becomes infectious. This one is the infectious one. The embryonated egg will be the infectious form. Okay. Now, look at the life cycle of Entrobius vermicularis, guys. Where is the photo of Entrobius vermicularis? Uh, hold on. Okay. So, here is the photo of the life cycle hand drawn. Actually, <clears throat> what you can see here, this man is there. No. He will, uh, some for some reason, he will get this infection, okay. He will eat this, let's say this, this egg, uh, which is embryonated egg, he will eat, okay. Some contaminated hand, food, drink, clothing, something. And this embryonated egg enters this man, okay. So, when this embryonated egg enters this man, this uh, uh, egg, what happens, it goes to ileum. And in ileum, it will mount, that is in small intestine, it will mount and it will reach the large intestine, that is the cecum. You know it loves the cecum and the appendix, you already know that, right? So what will happen, it will, uh, this worm which comes out of this egg, what will happen, that will migrate towards the cecum. And in the cecum, it will mature into the adult worm, okay? So just uh, pay attention here, here is the large intestine, guys. It came via, somehow it reached a small intestine, okay? This is the stomach and this is the small intestine. In small intestine, it will mount. In the ileum, actually, it will mount. And the larva is released from the embryonated egg, right? There it will mount. Then it will enter the cecum. Here, cecum it loves. So, here it will mature into the adult form, okay? So, now let us see there are uh, two worms here. The One is the female and one is the male, okay? Now, what happens to this uh, uh, female, right? And the male, obviously, they will mature. And whenever, after this... Uh, what do they call it? Mating. So after they mate, okay, what happens after they mate? This male dies. Poor male, he dies, okay. Now this female, uh, let us say she's gravid, she's going to lay the eggs. You know how? Very, very, very uh, horror story it is. Now what it will do from the cecum, let us say this is the cecum, guys. Okay. Here in the cecum, this adult female uh, matured and they have uh, mating, the male dies. This female is gravid, let's say, okay. She's carrying all the eggs. She moves via the colon, okay, she comes here and here there is the anus, correct? What she does, in the night it comes out of this anus, in the night the female comes out of the anus and in the perianal region it will go and lay the eggs, okay? It will go and lay the eggs in the perianal region, not in the rectum. That is why sometimes in the feces you will not find the eggs sometimes. In the perianal region there will be the eggs. Okay, so that is why in the night for these people it will itch because this female is trying to crawl out in the night and they are they having disturbed sleep and in the night this anus becomes very itchy. So you understood now, right? And then moving on in the life cycle where we are, guys. This is we are, we are reading about what today? Enterobius vermicularis. So just wake up. We are reading Enterobius vermicularis life cycle. Okay. So then what happens? Uh, <clears throat> the eggs are laid in the perianal region by the gravid female. So till here we have finished. The eggs are laid at the perianal skin by the gravid female. So these eggs can be there in feces. Okay, these are the embryonated eggs. Somehow again it reaches the man. Or there can be auto-infection. Auto-infection, retro-infection, so many things can be there. Auto-infection is like this person, if it's a child, na, they will scratch their perianal skin, get the eggs into their uh, fingernails and then reaches the mouth again or retro infection is these eggs can hatch okay these eggs can hatch around the anus and go back via the anus into the colon that is also so scary so that's auto infection retro infection all sorts of infections are there in this entrobius vermicularis now moving on here we are so inside the man we saw the uh, in the uh, the larva is going to come out of this egg it is going to mount it is going to mature in the cecum to become an adult worm. So we have finished the life cycle of Entrobius vermicularis. So the, it can, man is the only host you have seen now. Let us go back to the details of the life cycle 
of introbius vermicularis. So man is the natural host guys, man, man is the single host for the entire life cycle. So this is called as a monozenous it seems, monozenous, Ma man is the natural host. So only one host it has, monozenous. The infective form you know is embryonated egg that contains the larva. Mode of infection, you saw man acquires infection by eating something which has these embryonated eggs or it can have, he can, auto infection can happen or a retro infection. Even this had to be mentioned, even retro infection can happen. Wait, let's write off here. Retro infection also can happen. Retro infection means you understood, right? The eggs hatch are in the perianal region and go back into the colon. That is retro infection. Now eggs, they molt in the small intestine, they mature into adults in the cecum. The female comes out through the colon, um, into the uh, comes out of the anus in the night. Right, they lay their eggs. These female uh, worm, they are very, very migrating type of worm. They love to travel. They can enter the vulva, vagina, uterus, fallopian tube, peritoneum, everything. Okay, female worm. Male worm, it dies after mating. So obviously, it is not migrating. So realize this: male worm dies. Male worm dies. Male worm dies after mating. Okay, so it does not migrate. So you will find the female worm where and all in the vulva, vagina, uterus, fallopian tube. Okay, everything it is entering. Interesting. Now the eggs are not much found in the feces because they are not in the rectum, right? They are in the perianal region. This is very strange things about uh, introbius vermicularis. So that's all uh, we have seen all this now. So life cycle of uh, introbius vermicularis over. Is that good for you? Shall we move on? Okay, very good. So in introbius vermicularis, what are we reading? We finished life cycle. We saw how it is. Uh, uh, how we get it, mode of infection, natural host is man, it is mono uh, uh, we are the only host, it's only one host. Infective form is the embryo noted larva, etc, etc. Moving on now to the clinical features. So what will you see in clinical features? It is easy again, not so difficult. It is usually seen in children. Females are affected more, so you saw vulva, vagina, uterus, fallopian tube, peritoneum, everything, right? Females are affected more. It's asymptomatic in uh, one third people. Otherwise, what will be there if the symptoms will be like pruritus ani, that is itching around the anus and especially in the night, that is called as some nocturnal, it's right, it is nocturnal. So, uh, why this happens is because the female crawls out of the anus in the night, it likes it when the man is, uh, on the, or the person is sleeping, nicely it will crawl out, okay, oh, giving me goosebumps when I am saying this also. Now, a female worm can enter the vulva, vagina, etc. So, it will cause salpingitis, peritonitis, appendicitis, etc. Appendicitis, like we told you, it loves the cecum and the appendix. So, sometimes when they have removed surgically the appendix, they have found that this entropious vermicularis can be there in that. Okay. So, that was about vermicularis, uh, entropious vermicularis. What is it? Pinworm, threadworm. Right. Uh, so, that they, those were the clinical features. Now, let's move on to diagnosis of uh, entropious vermicularis. How will you diagnose? Obviously, you will detect the egg, right? So, you will detect the egg where oh, you have seen the egg, how they look, right? Transparent, the uh, they, they are not bile stained, they are plain or convex and uh, the egg shell is double layered, thick but still transparent and um, inside there will be a tadpole like lava, all that. So, you can detect the egg. How can you detect the egg by an NIH swab or a cellophane, uh, cellophane scotch tape method? So you can you you can use an NIH swab that is a National Institute of Health USA that swab. Guys, for this NIH swab, it's a separate video is there. Please watch that separate video because NIH swab itself is an important topic for the exam. Then you have cellophane tape, uh, scat, scotch tape method. Basically, they will put the tape around the anus and the, they'll see if they can get the eggs in that tape and then they will examine it in the microscope. So you understood, right? Normal tape only. This is tape. Normal tape that you get, scotch tape, any tape, cellophane tape sticky tape. So just put it in the, near the anus and if they take this tape out, all the eggs will be sticking to this tape and if you observe under the microscope, probably you will detect the eggs of entrobius vermicularis. Okay, those, that was about the detection of egg. Now let us move on to the detect detection of the adult worm. So in adult worm, you can detect in the fingernail of these children or in the stools, obviously in the stools or you can see around anus at night. You can actually see them in the anus at night. So, uh, that is what we have seen in this photo, you remember, seen around the anus at night. So, guys, we are done with the lab diagnosis of entrobius vermicularis. Just one thing they have written in this textbook uh, is that uh, you will not see any uh, eosinophilia or uh, elevated IgE in this case, it seems. 
So, anyways, uh, if you want, you can note these two points extra. Uh, they are not; they are, it is not associated with eosinophilia or elevated uh, IgE. Okay, but what you will you write if they ask introbius vermicularis uh, lab diagnosis? You will detect the eggs and you will detect the adult worm. In these, in this cases, it's better to draw diagrams. So, draw the egg and draw the adult worm also with that uh, esophagus double bulb and all that. So, you will get good marks if you draw the diagrams. You forgot or you remember how they look in the morphology? So, the adult worms draw these diagrams with this uh, cervical alley, cuticular expansions, three wings, something and esophagus double bulb, male is shorter, they will have thread like pin like, uh, uh, thread like tails, okay. Then egg you draw like this, nicely you draw double uh, shell and all that, okay. Then you get nice marks. So, we are done with the <clears throat> lab diagnosis. Now, moving on to the treatment of entrobius vermicularis, guys. What will you give this person? You will give standard treatment that you have studied for anti-helminths. In anti-helminths pharmacology, you have studied the same thing. For nematodes, you will give mependazole, pyrantel, palmoate and albendazole, right? In this order, you can say mependazole, <coughs> pyrantel, <coughs> palmoate and albendazole. How will you prevent all this? Profile access by hygiene, food quality, etc. Okay, that's all for now in introbius vermicularis. Just a small recap. <clears throat> Guys, uh, itchy anus at night, entrobius vermicularis. Uh, it is a helminth nematode. Uh, it lives in the intestine, especially the cecum and the appendix. It is the world's most common parasite, especially affects the children. It is seen in temp cold and temperate regions. That is what is weird about uh, entrobius vermicularis. It's called threadworm, pitworm. Morphology, we have already shown you about the adult. Then we saw the morphology of the egg. Plano convex, not bile stain, floats, etc. Life cycle, we have seen man is the only host. So, we have seen the life, life cycle, we have seen. Then, coming to clinical features, we saw that pruritus ani, very important, pruritus ani. So, nocturnal enuresis. You can kind of say bedwetting, right, that can happen. Then, uh, salpingitis, appendicitis, peritonitis, etc. Okay. Don't forget that it is asymptomatic in one third people. So don't write off all the clinical features for getting asymptomatic. Then, diagnosis, detect the eggs, detect the adult worm, NI head swab, watch the separate video for NI head swab to understand what it is and elaborate here a little. Then, treatment is mebendazole, pyrantel, palmoate, albendazole. Okay, these are standard anti-helminthic drugs. So that was about Entrobius vermicularis. Uh, meet you in the next video. Bye-bye.